um, women don't have patience to be gazelle anymore, mm-hmm. right? Like um, our four mothers did or, you know, our older generation. They don't have that anymore. Um, and when you realize that you have options, you don't really stay committed to something that's toxic, right? Mm-hmm. Um, over and above that, it could be a financial thing. Women are actually focusing more and more on their careers. Hey family, a quick one. Over 87% of you are consuming this content every single week but are not subscribed. That means you are enjoying the growth conversations but you are not liking, you are not subscribing and you are not sharing it with others. So please, I plead with you, please subscribe so that you can share the love, you can share the growth and you can share this wonderful platform and wonderful safe space with others as well. Enjoy the episode. So today is a different one. Um, I'm sitting with a very beautiful woman, if I'm allowed to say that, Thank because you. <laughs> she's not here in her capacity of her beauty. <laughs> Thank you. Thank she's you, here in the capacity of how she thinks, how she interprets the law, mm-hmm. and how she helps people after interpreting the law for them. Am I correct? Correct. Is that precisely what you do? Correct. Yeah. So you're an admitted attorney mm-hmm. of the High Court. Is that what? It, mm-hmm. if that's what is said. Mm-hmm. Um, Miss or Mrs. Tibelo Motswane? Mrs. Mrs. Tibelo Motswane. Oh my gosh, so the beauty thing jam out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> out. Yeah, out. Um, thank you, thank you for coming here. Um, today is an educational episode, I mean, mm. all of them are, mm. but particularly because we, we are going to delve into a topic of marriage, love, why it ends, when mm. it ends, mm. what causes it to end, what are the repercussions, and diving straight into it. Mm. Um, it is said in 2020, 2018, 2019, 2020, um, like you have almost 200,000 marriages were registered in South Africa. Mm. We're now sitting at like just over 100,000 that are, mar- are registered in South Africa. Mm. What is discouraging people for getting married? It, it, it seems like people don't want to get married anymore. Mm. Is this the wrong observation? Are the numbers lying? Or are you seeing it in practice as well? Sure. Um, firstly, thank you for having me. Mm-hmm. Very, very important work that you do here. I'm honored to be here because it means I'm a cool kid. I saw the, <laughs> the caliber of people <laughs> that are on this show. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad that I've arrived. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> um, but anyway, you are absolutely correct because around 2018, 2019, I would say that was the peak of when I was doing probably 10 to 15 marriage contracts Mm -hmm. a month. Mm -hmm. And now that number is probably sitting around five to eight a month. And this has been a consistent trend since after COVID actually. So there may, you know, be a lot of factors as to why people are divorcing or deciding not to get married at all. Mm -hmm. Some of the factors that I can think of at the top of my head is that Women are a whole lot more independent now um, than ever before. Um, Women, uh, and this is just from like consultations. There's there's no like science behind it yet, right? This is just from consultations. Um, Women don't have patience to be gazelle anymore, Mm -hmm. right? Like um, our four mothers did or, you know, our older generation. They don't have that anymore. Um, And when you realize that you have options, you don't really stay committed to something that's toxic right Mm -hmm. um over and above that it could be a financial thing women are actually focusing more and more on their careers um fewer people are having children Mm -hmm. at an early stage in marriage Mm -hmm. so it might not be the fact that um people are not getting married at all it might be also the demographics um we might just be getting married at an older age than previously you know people were getting married around you know between ages 18 and 25 people are now probably prioritizing their careers first um financial stability and then getting married in their 40s for example um and then why else would people be delaying getting married or divorcing? Um, people divorce for financial reasons, for lack of communication, for lack of stimulation in the relationship, or you know the relationship is not as fun as it used to be, um, for lack of intimacy, 
people are busy with their careers yet again coming back to the career thing so there's quite a lot of issues at play as to why um that number has has halved is it more men or women who walk into your practice and want to serve the divorce uh, uh, and correct me with the terms um, as we go along, um, is it serving papers? Yeah, is it yeah, the, the correct. person who initiates? They're yeah, the one who serves. Plaintiff, yes, correct. Yeah. So I think I've positioned myself as sister-in-law, right? Which obviously the name draws a lot of women okay. to my practice. But um, I would say there was a point where, okay, let me put it this way: a lot of the time, it's the men who come for marriage contracts, right? Which is. Anti-nuptial agreements. Anti-nuptial agreements. Yes. So this is before um, Lobola negotiations take place, before the couple gets married. Usually, the, 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 the beginning stages, those consultations are initiated by the men. Okay. Right? But it is a lot of women who come to me for divorce advice. And a lot of the time, it's not women who've even made the decision to divorce. It's women who are saying, I've been it. married for 19, 20 years. Yeah. Um, what are my options? Because he's the breadwinner we're married in community of property or um, we have a marriage contract, we marriage out of community of property, I'm not working, we've got three children, one is in varsity, two are, you know, minor, what are my options? So a lot of the time for the divorce, it's women coming to find out what their options are, but for the decision of getting into marriage and getting marriage contracts, it's popularly men who come to me. Going back a bit to uh, uh, why marriages are not happening as often, women uh, in the deeds office are the ones buying more first houses than men. Correct. Um, I just graduated with my MBL at UKZN Business School, and one of the speakers said there that 70% uh, of the graduates in that entire ceremony for the whole week that was happening mm -hmm. at UKZN was mm -hmm. women. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. do you think woman as you're saying becoming more career driven graduating more which means education mm -hmm. um uh, buying their own properties mm -hmm. remember marriage one mm -hmm, of the things mm -hmm. that marriage was the center cornerstone of was that a man would give you a house mm. and give you a home the provider. now i have the home I have the and I also actually do really have the option to have children at a later stage. Like I said earlier, um, I now have the option of freezing my eggs, right? So I can actually push out having kids until I'm 40, 45, 48 even. Because huh. um, I can freeze my eggs from maybe age 23, 25. So all those things that you were getting into marriage for, oh, I need to have kids, you know, biological clock is not on my side, or, or provider, um, or women aren't educated, they're usually in admin roles, or they're nurses, um, teachers, whatever the case is, that has all changed. The face of all of that has changed. And that's why earlier I said, women are also now more aware of their options. And not necessarily options of, if I'm not happy, I can leave, but options that I don't have to get married to have kids. I don't have to get married in order to, you know, be able to afford my first house or to qualify to buy my first house. Because hmm. before, anyway, the laws were that you needed your husband's consent sure, before sure, buying a house. Sure, you know, sure. those little things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that is intriguing. Then subsequently, ma marriages have decreased, but divorces have increased by about 13%. Mm -hmm in the last few years, and it's exponentially growing. Mm -hmm. um, many say, uh, you can correct me, is that in the first five, six, seven, eight years, half of marriages don't make it to year mm -hmm. eight mm -hmm. or year nine. So those were the numbers, right? Yeah. And then add to that a global pandemic. Hmm. So definitely, in the, just in the last five years alone, add to all of those pre-existing factors a global pandemic where even if you did get married in 2019, you most likely didn't make it to the end of 2020. Yeah. So just during that hard lockdown, you were like, I can't live with this man, or I can't live with this woman. Um, uh, again, people were getting retrenched during that time, and finances once again. Again, you realize that this person is a bad communicator. We've been in lockdown for three months together, but they can't even you know, just come and talk about ABC. So like those what? factors like would exacerbate the 
divorce um, or the reasons why a couple would then get divorced. Give me an example of why a lockdown would break a marriage. Surely we should be at our happiest. We are together. You're yeah. the love of my life. <laughs> um, sometimes it's one of those things that distance sort of makes the heart grow fonder, right? You. And when you are now stuck, let me say stuck with this person, because that's how people would express it to me. Um, we've been stuck in the house for, you know, two, three months. Maybe um, it took longer for some companies to go back to the going back to work the thing. Office, so yeah. now we're both working from home. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. then you realize that, your oh, shame, your husband, even just to make an egg, like, it's problematic. So now during lockdown, you're taking care of the children and also taking care of this grown man, right? Um, and it's not something that you thought about before because he'd really just come home at 9 p.m. and you've already cooked dinner. You've already done everything for the kids. And now your thinking is, but if we've both been here the whole day and you saw I was also in front of the laptop and we're both working, why aren't you bathing the kids in the evening? Why aren't you cooking in the evening? Why aren't you doing the chores in the evening? So those kind of little aggressions, um, and maybe not even little, let me not say little, but those kind of aggressions obviously got um, put under a microscope when mm. we're spending that much time together. How much does the cell phone contribute Yo. to divorces? <laughs> it's, I've, I actually, I, I noticed that it's the cell phone and the TV in the bedroom. <laughs> like, <laughs> like women will complain about the TV in the bedroom. Yeah. Um, you know, we're not communicating. It's stopping us from being intimate. But also generally the cell phone. And, you know, it's rude to have a cell phone even when you're at dinner with friends. Um, I can't give you the percentages, but quite a lot of times they have cited the phone being an issue. Um, maybe it's too much um, around when we're having discussions or there's always a phone call that you have to excuse yourself for and go speak in the garden. It's just an example. What does that phone call consist of? Why can't I speak in front of my wife? Yeah. Is, are those or the my, issues? Or even my husband. Or my husband, yeah. 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 So those are some of the issues that, you know... Um, we talk about sometimes during divorce, but the top three is lack of communication, um, adulterous behavior, and finances. What I would actually even say it's the, the, if I have to put it in order, mm -hmm. it's usually finances. Really? Mm. It's it's people it's, break up if, for, because of money more than because anything. Because of money more than anything, a lot of the times we are willing to tolerate each other when our lifestyles are comfortable. Sure. So if there's a shift in that dynamic, if there's a shift in, you know, one of us gets retrenched or one of us decides to go into business and then business doesn't work out or business does in the beginning, boom, and then things, um, you know, uh, fall to the wayside, that contributes. I want to go back to the cell phone because it's, it's, it's such a nuance. Remember in the cell phone, there's work emails. In the cell yeah, phone, there's Yeah, everything is TikTok. in the cell phone. In the cell phone, there's Instagram. Mm -hmm. In the YouTube, cell phone, there's YouTube. Podcast. There's WhatsApp. There's work emails. There's yeah, work. There's everything. Um, there's everything. Uh, uh, what in the cell phone? Because I believe... It's probably then attached to the lack of communication. Okay. Right? Like, please excuse me, I just need to attend to this email. Mm -hmm. Or please excuse me, I need to check the stats for this episode that I, you know, um, what's the word, published. Whatever the case is. Maybe it goes back to lack of communication. Maybe not the device itself, but how are you handling your device when you're around me? Um, you might be missing out on important family gatherings or conversations because you decided to be on your phone the whole time. I'll, I'll say this because she's been on the show before and we get along. Um, as my husband, uh, I'm speaking at the, as the wife now. Mm, mm. As my husband, why are you always liking Cindy Makatini's pictures yeah. on Instagram? <laughs> okay, she's hot. Um, but... <laughs> Surely those are some sure. of the things that cause friction. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, for me, that's a difficult topic to even comment on because my husband is not on social media, not that I know of anyway. Mm, mm. Um but yeah, yeah, those are the kind of conversations that couples do have. Yeah. And, and they, they come and they like, I'm sure when they're venting, because a client's vent as if you're their yes, therapist. Yes, sometimes it gets <laughs> a little bit out of hand. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and they say, Instagram, the likes of all these girls, he's there, he's mm, there, he appears mm, everywhere. Mm, mm, I found DMs, he DMs mm, these girls. Mm. Once again, it's the cell phone. And it, it and it actually does go back to communication. Communication, yeah. yeah. And in the bigger scheme of things, it also goes back to like 
finances. Like if you know that he's on his phone and he's definitely making money, you're going to be a little bit tolerant. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. So, so somehow these three pillars, they come back to each other. These things are interconnected. Um, and like I said, there's, there's a lot of nuances um, that contribute to the success or the failure of a marriage, right? And and I think those will also be topics that can continue to be studied, not just from a legal perspective, um, from a numbers perspective, also from a psychological perspective. Do we have a power dynamics issue in our marriages in 2024? Yeah, I think, I think the power dynamics will always be there. Yeah, definitely. We... Um, when you come into a marriage, you are two different individuals, right? Who were brought up differently. Um, I grew up uh, being raised by a single mom, right? Mm -hmm. So for me, the strongest person in a setting is, is a, a woman, woman, right? You grew up with your dad being the provider or your dad being a pastor or um, your dad being an influential member in your community, maybe a principal, a teacher that everyone loved, a great coach, sports coach. And for, he, for you, it was the dad who was powerful, right? So I grew up with my mom not cooking, for example, right? Because she was working mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and she'd come late. So and you she'd guys expect the cook. kids to cook, yeah, right? Yeah. And so now when I get married to you and you grew up watching your mom do the cooking and your dad come late, already you and I have a different worldview. And our expectations are different because of the way in which we were raised. So it's not to say you're wrong, I'm right, or whatever. But the power dynamics, or yeah, all of that will always exist because we are two different individuals and we have two different worldviews. Are men, especially in marriages, leaving marriages where women are making more than they are making? Um, okay, I've seen it play out. I've seen it play out in um, with my own clients, but also just like on TV, it appears to be um, one of the factors uh, that you know men tend to leave women who are empowered, um, overly <laughs> empowered, who are miss independent, um, and that could be for a lot of reasons. Also, again, it could be your worldview, how you grew up. So, um, you know, uh, if, if if you if you grew up and your father was the provider or you've been, you come from, you know, a community where men were the providers and you've been married for 10 years and you lose your job, it's no secret that men spiral more sure. when they lose their jobs. Mm -hmm. So COVID comes along, you get retrenched because it's a first in, first out type um, of setup. You get retrenched and all you know is to be a provider. And now, you're, you, and now you can't provide. And let's say you and your wife were in the exact same industry, but she is now the one who has her job, mm -hmm. right? Um, and as a result, she then becomes the breadwinner. You feel disempowered as a man. The, your identity was attached to you being a provider. So now you cannot handle the fact that um, your wife has late night meetings. Um, she's possibly working on a weekend, not you know, not as available anymore. And maybe she's not as available. You just now see it more often because you're at home, you're retrenched. How often though, is it the other way around where it's not just about the man feeling disempowered, but the woman actively disempowering the man by using the fact that she now has more power? Oh, it happens. Absolutely. It happens. We know it happens. Mm -hmm. um, I can't speak for it because I haven't had a client that says, oh, I'm leaving him because he doesn't, you know, or because he lost his job. They won't exactly flat out say that sometimes, but it happens. It does happen. They, you they you are can also see the women, nuance. Yeah. yeah, they are also women who are abusive, sure. mean girls. Sure. Yeah, sure. it happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, once again, it comes back to the power dynamics of modern marriages is mm. that um, these women, oof, that sounds harsh. These, yeah. <laughs> Don't come for us. <laughs> Women who then make more money than, than their husbands have now been branded as I'm a feminist who will never find yeah, a man. Yeah, that word. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, Perpetuated to, by movies and society too. Sure. But to be fair, we are witnessing it in our communities, in our societies. There aren't many women who drive a nice German car in their mid-30s who are married, who have bought all of this on their own. We're <laughs> witnessing it in real life. We might not have the stats. 
but we, yeah. but we're okay, seeing I it. Hear you. The, as you're saying, they're not having the children early. Yeah. Um, they're choosing not to marry, whether mm-hmm. they're choosing it or not, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. or they are not tolerating what men come with. Yeah, and so also, they don't marry. Mm, mm. Also, with 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 um, empowered women, right? We have a lot of women empowerment events in general, right? But we also need to empower the, the men hmm. because who is teaching these unempowered men or rather, you know, how to handle these empowered women? Yeah. So maybe those kind of things, I'm, say, I'm, I'm saying it's contributing to the bigger conversation Correct. that we're having, right? That nobody is teaching the men how to be able to live and coexist with empowered women. With an women. empowered woman. Then we're going about things the wrong way. Mm. Mm. We definitely are because we're assuming that um, because the world has been patriarchal for so long, mm. that men just know just know what to do. Yeah, yeah. I suppose there's a you know in trying to balance the scales as well, we may be putting a little bit more rocks on the one side. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is marriage sustained by love? I mean, and money. <laughs> I love how you keep circling back to the money. And, and because, hey, Radibona, like, <laughs> um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of, there are a lot of things that come into play, uh, like I said earlier, that build the success of a marriage or that can contribute to the failure of a marriage. Um, and love on its own, unfortunately, is not enough. Dare I say, a marriage can be successful even if there's no love. We've seen it happen. Yeah. We've seen it happen. Yeah. And, and, and all the other what? things exist, and but love. And it can also be successful even when there's no money, because we've seen it happen. But we just know that more often than not, and we're not talking about... Copious amounts of money. Money yes. in, a, yeah, in abundance. You know, we're yeah. just talking about like... Like, yeah. you know, uh, we need electricity. Are you able to buy the units? Sure, sure, you know, we're just talking sure. about... We're not even talking about so needs? much money. Can you meet our needs? And especially the needs that we agreed on. The basics. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, not, not, not necessarily on love alone. Man cannot live on bread alone. <laughs> Once again, you can base it on your, the cases that you've dealt with. Mm. Are, men and observations. More, are men cheating more than women? Do men cheat more than women? I, w- is I would the like cause? to say that it's probably the fact that men are busted more often, okay. right? But I do find it more and more interesting that women have been able to now finally open up about them having affairs. You know, um, before it was one of those things where you're, you're, you're having a consultation with a client and then you're like, okay, let's do this. She serves the divorce papers and he comes back and he says, yeah, but because you had an affair in 2017. And then it sort of like catches you off guard, right? Because women were not speaking about these things sure, and hoping sure. that, okay, maybe for whatever reason, the he husband didn't confront it. them yeah. about it. Um, or you hoping he won't mention it because you guys just want to divorce amicably. But I have seen more and more women are starting to open up about the fact that things aren't working out. And the reason why they're not working out is because I had an affair for whatever reason. Lots of reasons that are cited. But yeah, women are now starting own, to own up to the fact that sometimes it be us. Three reasons why women have affairs. Lack of intimacy with their partners. So the, the one I'm married to, there's no sex. Yes. Or it's minimal. Or, yeah. Or it's not the way like how Sipo did it. <laughs> Hectic Sipo. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, um, uh, lack of communication again. And finances. But what, what, what does communication have to do with Sometimes you're just like, ah, this guy is cheating. broke. Uh, we're not communicating. So you maybe I'm not expressing my needs. Right? Or when I then come to you and say, Lou, our sex life is suffering, you're like, ah, also the thing happy. Why are you always complaining? Right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, so, lack mm-hmm. of that kind of um, effective communication, effective and progressive communication. Or, um, I need to take, I need to take the, the boys for soccer practice on Saturday and you're never there. 
and then yeah. and then the soccer coach is always there and he's, ah, the and he's danger, nice to me right and he's nice to <laughs> and me he's nice. and, so he's, and he buys us cool drinks yeah, while yeah. we waiting there yeah. and he comes with an umbrella and holds it up for me mm-hmm. while i'm watching the mm-hmm. match while the boys are mm-hmm. playing mm-hmm. so at the center is also just that companionship might be liking um and sometimes it's really just about revenge like okay you cheated on me so hmm. i'm gonna cheat back to balance the equation. Shame, never and works. It doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> We've seen it. It does not work. Yeah. yeah. Money. You said money is the third money. reason. People cheat seeking better money outside? Probably. Probably. So a married woman can be a side to a rich guy? Mm, we've seen it happen. Because they want the rich guy's money mm-hmm. and the lifestyle. Uh, mm-hmm. We've also seen men cheat with men because mm-hmm. men out there are offering them more money. Correct. Right? Correct. And you are funding our lifestyle with, yo, oh, <laughs> I don't want to say the same names, but with, you know. <laughs> yes, correct. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Men love men, right? It happens. It happens. It happens. Why are you defeated? I'm, I'm not defeated. I, 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 I'm trying to find the most respectable way to put it. Correctly so, because there is something called gay for pay in society. Hectic. See, now that's new to me. Well, those men who are married, uh-huh. their wife has a certain lifestyle they used to. Mm-hmm. The wife is hounding Uguti, why is, has our lifestyle changed? Mm-hmm. There's pressure to maintain this lifestyle. There is a much richer man, Ikhrutmani, who I look up to as a man. Mm, and only to find that. out he's gay or bisexual, uh, Ikhrutman. Uh, and then we're and in curious. A, and curious. And mm. curious. Uh, all bi-curious, mm, yes. Mm. And then I realized that getting closer to him by getting intimate with him unlocks a new level of access to him and all of a sudden mm-hmm. he's generous mm-hmm. and the cycle continues. Mm-hmm. So there's so, money yeah. flow from him yeah. to your wife. So you see, once again, it brings us back to the conversation of money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, how important is sex in a marriage? Like I said to you earlier, I want to say that it's usually money, then the lack of intimacy. So the us not having sex. Yeah. Why is sex so high up in the hierarchy of marriage? Because the, the, the naive me sees marriage as a family building unit. So, for example, I feel like not, it's not that everybody has a lot of sex before they get married, but I feel like generally most people get into marriages after they've had previous partners that they've had sex with. Mm-hmm. So what is this sexual fantasy you are still seeking for in our marriage mm. instead of building a home? Mm. Mm. I'm I'm just a baby and I'm just a lawyer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but that's interesting. I think you should um, speak to like a, you know um, what 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 do they call themselves? Maybe like a sex educator sure, sure, or a sure. psychologist, and maybe just make a broader topic out of this yeah. that we're talking about, so that we can have an expert expand on that. Because I'll just speak on you know what my clients are usually saying yeah. during divorce proceedings or yeah. leading up to a marriage. At um, we're not having enough sex, so I'm gay. Because for me, mm. divorce should be like the final straw, right? Mm. Um, so is sex that important that it leads to a final straw? I think that's what I'm struggling mm. with. Mm. I, I don't know if there's ever an isolated reason In, okay, I hear you. for why a couple or why a marriage would fail. I think it's a series of events. Um, and a collection of issues. And I feel that it's the same reason why anything else would fail in life, why a business doesn't, you know, um, succeed, why a friendship fails. I think it's a collection and a series of little things that add up to that moment. I don't think I'm just getting divorced because we're not having sex, or I'm just getting divorced because you don't have money. There could be a lot of other things. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and as you're saying, somehow the money, the, 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 the infidelity, the sex. Lack it, of communication. Lack of communication. Your phone. It, it all just. No, 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 no. The one meets the other. All these things. And you know that the minute you start falling out of love with someone, the little habits start to annoy you as I well. I hear you. I hear you. Right? So him leaving the 
towel on the bathroom floor at the beginning of the relationship was just so cute and now you cannot tolerate it. <laughs> and it's not because of anything else. It's because there's been so many things, so many things, that sometimes the last straw is that you didn't listen to me that last day that I said, pick the towel up. And it just, it was like, ah, it's, I, it's I'm over. done with this. Curtains. I'm done with this. For purposes of educating, um, what different type of marriages exist in South Africa? Mm, I like that question. That's my favorite topic. <laughs> um, so the different regimes that exist are in community of property, where that is the default system that applies. So if you get married and we don't get the marriage contract, the antinuptial contract that we touched on earlier, if that's not drafted before the Lobola negotiations, if we're black, I like saying before the Lobola negotiations, or before we see a marriage officer, before we sign at home affairs, <coughs> then you'll automatically be married in community of property. And that means that your assets, your liabilities, um, and mine, before we meet and after we meet, during the marriage, they fall into the joint estate, right? Where the danger is. At the end of the marriage, we walk away 50-50. So this is 50-50 after the joint liabilities have been paid. So even if you had a student loan or whatever loan of like 300K before we got married, and then we get married and our marriage only lasts for a year. That 300K belongs to both of us. So at the end of the marriage, I'm liable for 150K. Assuming that in the 12 months that we were married, you never once paid the bank any amount. I don't know how you would have gotten away with it, but let's, assuming that you never once paid off that loan, paid a cent, then at the end of the marriage, I'm equally liable for that loan. So this can be a loan that you got, you know, even years before you met me. Um, and then if you get a marriage contract, you can either be married with or without accrual. With accrual means that everything that we have after the date of marriage, not the debts, but everything that's accrued, everything we build after the date of marriage in our separate um, estates. At the end of the marriage, we'll then do a calculation that shows that whoever has the least, whoever's estate has grown the least during the marriage can then claim from the other party. Half of the difference of the two estates. And then out of community of property without accrual means that when we walk away, I don't owe you anything, you don't owe me anything. Um, no debts, no sharing of debts, no sharing of monies. I'm 27, young lady. Uh, I've, I've got my LLB, I'm doing my articles, or I'm a candidate, mm. I'm a candidate attorney, mm. or I'm a young graduate engineer, or I'm a mm. young graduate accountant, I'm marrying a guy who's 29, he's in a similar position, mm. which marriage do you advise me to take? As long as it's out of community of property, because today's price is not tomorrow's price, and you don't know what the color of tomorrow is. So the minute uh, you start coming with, we both relatively have nothing. That's where the danger is because um, you're gonna get married and maybe five, let's say 10 years from now, um, we're gonna use Sipo again. Sipo decides to have children outside of the marriage, all right? During his retrenchment, there's another COVID touch wood, right? He has kids outside of his marriage, two kids that you don't know about and you guys have one kid, right? Um, and now his baby mamas want to claim child maintenance. They find out that Sipo doesn't work, but his wife is an executive at a bank. Those baby mamas can technically, technically claim from the joint estate, right? So in you being married to Sipo, with no marriage contract and being married in community of property, you are technically liable to maintain his extramarital children hmm. that he had during his shenanigans when he was retrenched or when he is still retrenched. Hmm. So you don't want to do that. One more scenario. I'm 20, I'm 32. Mm. I've got my job, I drive a, a polo or an entry level SUV. Mm. Um, and I married a divorced man who's 54 mm -hmm. and he probably has 7 million rand in his estate. What marriage must I go into? Don't get married in community of property because he probably has, he probably appears 
to have 7 million rand. Okay. And then when he dies, you find out that he's got 13 kids and three other side chicks that he was supporting. And like, let me just give you an example with especially things like pension fund. Let's say, let's say he's got a, he's been working his whole life, very lucrative pension fund, right? Um, and by the time he dies, he, let's say the pension fund pays out 5 million, right? And your two children, one is 19, the other is 17. And then he's got three children outside of the marriage who are one, three, and five, right? Technically, one, three, and five, um, staying with the girlfriend. Let's just say he had the three kids with that girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Technically, the pension fund adjudicator can say, well, the two older kids are in varsity. They're close to being done. They don't really need to be maintained for the rest of their lives or as long as these children, the older children will need to be maintained. So it could happen that in that five million, the side chick and her three kids get 4.8. You as the wife can get 20K. And then your other two kids will share that 180. It could happen. Because they're over age. Because they... They, they don't. They they're they not don't going need to it that need. Much. Yeah, yeah. Like the one year old is still gonna need to get to varsity. Yeah. Right. So I'm just saying that these are the things that could happen. Someone could appear to be rich, but you don't know the color of tomorrow. So to be on the safe side, I I'm 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 probably never going to advocate for being married in community of property, even if it looks the part. Then why is it our default? I I don't know. The lawmakers were dizzy. Maybe yeah. we must talk to them. Yeah, yeah it should yeah. be an opt-in. Yeah, it, it, it <laughs> I hear you. Yeah. Uh, 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 which brings to me that it definitely is benefiting someone. And You know what? Uh, that's the beauty of it, I guess. When it works, in the fairy tale, it works. But too often, and or rather more often than not, I, as an attorney, am exposed to the dangers of it not working out. And a lot of the time, it's us picking up the pieces from it not working out. Mrs. Devela Motswane, sister-in-law, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> I, this was lovely. Uh, thank you. Um, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the chat because it was very different, but uh, highly informative. I love it. Um, and, 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 and geez, uh, as much as I'd say I'd hope not more people divorce, but mm. I've also come to learn as we get older mm. that divorce is not always bad. Mm. There's, there's no shame in divorcing and I Correct. say this a lot yeah. um, especially when I want women to be comfortable with the consultation there's no shame in divorcing um, and I think it would be an uh, what's the word Your injustice. injustice or a disservice if I don't mention that if you are married in community of property you can still change to out of community of property there is a process a high court application that is done and you and your partner have that conversation Let's speak to Tabello about changing our marriage regime from in community to out of community of property. There's no shame in that. And it doesn't mean that you guys love each other less. It means that you guys are operating from a point of, you know, being more informed. Let's say you got married at age 19 and got married in the church. And the, you know, and the church will always say, no, but we're building, we're building, we're building, which is great. But now... For practical reasons, you run a business or your husband runs a business and there's a risk of things just not working out. There's a risk of a pandemic and you guys really just want to mitigate the risk that comes with um, owning a joint estate. You can always have that conversation about let's do this properly. Let's do the high court application. Let's change our regime. But we need more and more platforms like yours that are having um, these conversations sure. and allowing us to come in and educate people on their options and the things and the legal things that exist out there. So thank you very much for having me. This was a very important conversation and continue doing the work that you do. Dibelo, Dibelo, I'm sick of this man. Where do I find you? <laughs> <laughs> um, sustain law on all platforms. Dibelo Motswani, Google me. You should be able to then find all my various platforms. Website www.sustainlaw.co.za. I'm Lungelo KM. I don't know if I'm still going to get married after this episode, <laughs> but hey, let me be. I'll see you on the next episode. <laughs>
Introducing the epitome of luxury living, Galu Luxury Villas and Suites, your private sanctuary of opulence and elegance. Nestled amongst the lush, sun-kissed landscapes of Durban, KwaZulu-Natal, this Galu Luxury Villa is a paradise of tranquility, offering breathtaking panoramic views of the neighborhood. Step into a world of refined luxury where every detail has been meticulously crafted to create an atmosphere of sophistication and comfort. This villa is kept within a gated and secure property for your peace of mind. The Kalu Villa is available for both short-term and long-term stays, making it the ideal location for your next vacation or special event. This villa boasts spacious living areas and floor-to-ceiling windows that flood the interior with natural light, making you feel at one with the surrounding beauty paired with multiple terraces, an outdoor lounge and a dining area. Live the dream, make memories and indulge in the life you deserve. Contact us today to book your stay or to learn more about this exquisite property. Your oasis of opulence awaits.